So Ash Ketchum is one of the most popular Pokemon anime characters we all know and he has some amazing Pokemon. Now for those who don't know, a bit back I made a video giving Ash brand new Pokemon teams for every series. So it makes sense that today we tackle characters that others love and push Ash forward, that being his rivals. But I will say, this is a very long list of characters. Gokurezu? Oh poor go- wait, that fire monkey already came back already. Screw this, where's my Goga? Hey, is that Raph? Just the person I was looking for. Hey, what's going on guys? My name's Raph, and huge thanks to the bro Infamous for having me on the channel today. Of course, bro. We have a lot of Pokemon teams to tackle, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. First up, we have Ash's first ever rival, Gary. His team would be Aerodactyl, Charizard, Blastoise, Electivire, Umbreon, and Galarian Moltres. Now I know what you're thinking, what the heck are these options? Well, if you shush and let me explain, then you'll find out. Aerodactyl was a Pokemon that was resurrected during the project Gary took part in episode 15 of Pokemon Chronicles. Gary decided to give the Pokemon to Crystal for her to look after it, but what if he kept it? It would have been a great asset to him, and it even has the capability of Mega Evolution. Charizard is a Pokemon that Blue, Gary's counterpart, has on his Pokemon Adventures manga team. It's quite a fitting Pokemon for Gary overall too in relation to his manga's counterpart. As for Galarian Moltres, this one was a bit of a wild card as it relates to the Project Mew segment of Pokemon Journeys. We know that Gary encountered Moltres back with Ash and Go, but we thought why not spice it up a bit? No pun intended. Following Gary is another fan favorite, that being Richie. For his team, it would be Sparky, Charizard, Vaporeon, Tyranitar, Swellow, and Grotto. Now some of these are pretty easy picks, like Sparky is just like Ash's Pikachu, with a sweet hairdo of course, and his Charizard Zippo is from his Charmeleon which evolved and that was hinted at in the manga. Then Tyranitar is from his Pupitar which was used against Butch and Cassidy. This Pokemon was always strong in battle, so I didn't see a future where it didn't evolve. As for Swellow, it's just from his evolved Talo Rose which he used for a brief appearance within the Celebi and Joy Special. Then for Eevee, it was a mentioned Pokemon during a conversation between Oak and Richie as he was wondering how to evolve it. So for balance sake, we gave him Vaporeon. And lastly, Grotto is another Pokemon that goes with the current theme of Generation 4, and the remakes with Legends coming out soon. Plus, why not give him a grass type that Ash also owned, as he does mimic Ash a couple times on his team. But let's just see if he can become a league champion like Ash too. Now representing Johto, we have Harrison, and his team will be Blaziken, Houndoom, Miltank, Kecleon, Steelix, and Grumpig. Now this overall team is composed of Pokemon that he uses in the anime. Well, except for Grumpig. Now, Harrison actually uses a Hypno on his team, which of course is a cool Pokemon from Kanto. But why not have a representation for Hoenn, as we got teased with Blaziken. So the best pick was to switch it out for Grumpig, which is still a psychic Pokemon and one that we don't get to see too often, and it would have had fans also surprised at a new Pokemon. Up next is Hoenn rival Morrison. His team would now consist of Swampert, Arcanine, Gligar, Steelix, Metagross, and Zangoose. The only two additions we made with Morrison's team would be that his Growlithe would now evolve into an Arcanine, and that Girafferig would be swapped for a Zangoose. Arcanine is pretty straightforward, as it's simply Growlithe that just evolved into its final stage. As for Zangoose, we felt that this Pokemon would be pretty strong under Morrison's personnel. Zangoose is a Pokemon that's been prominent throughout the course of the AG series, and it seems like a good fit for Morrison overall, especially with how he likes to challenge people, somewhat similar to how Zangoose portrays itself on the battlefield. For Tyson, we gave him Dragoon. Oh wait, that's Beyblade, that's the wrong anime, sorry, my bad. For Tyson, we pretty much stuck with his original team and swapped Metagross for Salamence instead. Seeing as we gave Morrison the privilege of having his Matang evolve into its final stage, we thought giving Tyson the alternative pseudo legendary would be more ideal. And it fits pretty nicely on his team. Since we're in the Sinnoh hype season, we'll kick it off with Nando and his new Pokemon team consisting of Rose Raid, Sunflora, Cherum, Krikatoon, Armaldo, and Beautyfly. You may see a theme going on here as Raph and I decided to focus this team around flowers and bugs, which seems to be the two typings Nando mainly uses. The new team members here are Cherum and Beautyfly. Now Cherum is due to having another Sinnoh Grass representation for the anime and could be a unique Pokemon for contests, especially with the form change. And Beautyfly is because it's another beautiful bug type Pokemon, which is a better choice than Motham, a good combination of style and skilled Pokemon. Now it's time for the best Ash rival of all time. Paul's new team will be Electivire, Torterra, Drapion, Ursaring, Honchkrow, and Grimmsnarl. Now I know you're already confused by Grimmsnarl as he's not a Pokemon that anyone could have until Galar. But hear me out because there's a specific reason for this choice, as I believe if we see Paul make his epic return in Pokemon Journeys, he will be sporting some new Pokemon on his team, 
Additionally, we don't have much representation for Galar, and this Pokemon's design and characteristic just stand out as a Pokemon he would catch and have on his team. Also to further show that, we have an amazing artist known by Thiago, who made some amazing artwork showing off Ash vs Paul using Mega Lucario vs Grimmsnarl. I believe this would be epic and something I'm hoping one day we could see in the anime. Sticking with Sinnoh, we have Barry. His team consists of Empoleon, Roseraid, Staraptor, Heracross, Rapidash and Snorlax. Now when it comes to Barry, we decided to give him some additions from his game counterpart. We swapped Skarmory for Rapidash so that it would cover the fire typing, and Barry already has a flying type on his team with Staraptor. As for Hitmonlee, Snorlax was the replacement. Snorlax tends to be a Pokemon Barry is very fond of in the games, and he's the trainer that introduces the player character to its pre-evolved baby form Munchlax. Plus we see Barry having this tanky beast by his side, so please don't find us on this one. Action Replay Boy is next. <sighs> well, this one's gonna be fun, but I'll give you the detour. I recently made a video on my channel talking about what Tobias's full team would be and how there's evidence to support it being full of legendary Pokemon. But in brief, the team would essentially be Darkrai, Latios, Latias, Entei, Zapdos and Lugia. If you want to know why, then be sure to check this video out. Thanks for the plug broski. Now it's time for a discount Paul, I, I mean Trip. Anyways, his team will be Superior, Unpheasant, Jellicent, Chandelure, Conkeldur, and Buffalon. Now we have some new faces like Unpheasant, Jellicent, and Chandelure, which are fully evolved Pokemon that Trip already owns, as these Pokemon were seen as Tranquil, Frillish, and Lampin. Besides that, the only new team member is Buffalon, which is a simple way to play homage to his role model, Alder. Next up is Cameron, the trainer who forgot a Pokemon and still beat Ash. I can't believe the writers really did that. I mean, ugh. anyway, his team will be Lucario, Ferrothorn, Samurai, Hydreigon, Swanna, and Heatmore. The only change here is Heatmore, which was replaced by Watchog. This change is simply to cover better typings. He still shouldn't win, but this would be his team. Now jumping over to a better Univol rival, we have Stefan, or Stefan, however you want to say it. Whatever it is, his team will be Zebstrika, Sock, Lipard, Bisharp, Conkeldur, and Drudigan. For this team, we went complete power. Stefan is known as a powerful trainer and his Pokemon can pack a punch, so why don't you give him better coverage with heavy hitters? Next up, we have Unova's Vetris Conference winner Virgil. The Evolution Specialist would keep the same team, except replace Eevee with Sylveon. Seeing as these are currently the only Evolutions in existence, it would have been nice to see Virgil own all of them. Just imagine if he actually got to battle Ash back in Unova and tease the new Undiscovered Generation 6 Evolution. Of course, he'd probably win, but still, it would have been a nice touch to say the least. Plus it's a flying type as well, oh wait, never mind. Bianca is next, no, not that one from EastEnders. Her new team would be Cincino, Petslil, Chandelure, Embor, Stoutland and Marshana. Like Barry, Bianca's team would be a mix of anime and game teams with a small addition. Her Minchino would then evolve into Cincino and we gave her a Petlil in replacement of Scalabur as it seems like a nice cute Pokemon to match with Bianca. Stoutland, Chandelure and Mushana are from her game team. So that in total makes a team of six. Now following Bianca with his dance moves is Tierno, which will have a team consisting of Mega Blastoise, Halucha, Hitmontop, Ludicolo, Raichu, and Politoed. For this team, it's pretty much the same team he already uses in the anime except for Halucha, which is a representation of Mexican style dancing, to of course fit his dancing motif. And of course he needs a Mega, and if Trevor can have a Mega Charizard Y, then Tierno can bust out a Mega Blastoise too. Oh yeah, and speaking of Trevor, his team would change too. Trevor's team is Charizard Y, Aerodactyl, Florgus, Quagsire, Gavantula, and Cradilly. Now the newest members of this team is to help his goal of being a scholar, so we picked Pokemon from different regions to aid him in his goal. Plus, why not have some proper type coverage that could help support him if the team needs it? Kalos Lumos Conference winner Alan is next, and his team would consist of the following. Mega Lizard on X, Metagross, Tyranitar, Scizor, Ursaring, and Weavile. We decided to swap Bishop for Scizor instead. Bishop is a very cool Pokemon, however we felt like it was made a staple back as the signature Pokemon of Haidu and Team Flare scientist Baroni. Plus Scizor seems more of a fit for Alan, still holding down the speed and power combinations. We swapped Unpheasant for Ursaring as again, this Pokemon is a beast. We probably wouldn't see it be as dangerous as Paul's Ursaring, but still, with the way Alan is able to tame power, I'm sure we can agree that this Ursaring wouldn't be a Pokemon you want to mess with. An honourable mention for Alan's team would be either one of the Toxtricity forms, as we feel like they would be amazing under his personnel. For Sawyer, this is probably the only entry we didn't change. His team is all around solid with a mixture of speed, bulk and raw power. But heck, 
why not let us know in the comments below which Pokemon you would like to see on Shotter's team. Now it's time to step into Alola, and first up is Gladion, and this team will be Savali, Zoroark, Umbreon, Lycanroc, Herdier, and Crobat. The new faces on the team are Herdier, due to being a Pokemon Gladion was close to when he was younger, and it's a Pokemon that was owned by his mom, and Crobat has to tie in his game counterpart and his anime connection with Lunala and Noivern, as they are both inspired by bats. Either way, facing him in the Pokemon League is still going to be pretty tough for Ash. Next up is a trainer known for his fiery passion, that being Kiawe, and his new team will consist of Charizard, Alola Marowak, Turtonator, Salazzle, Magmar, and Rapidash. Now half of this team is brand new team members, so let's touch on those really quick. Salazzle and Magmar are to tie in with Pokemon you may find on the trial mission within the games, as well as Pokemon that he uses in the battle tree. Then Rapidash is a simple callback to the one that he rode when he visited Kanto, and it seems like another fiery Pokemon he would add to his team. Alolan father figure Cuckoo is next, and his team would be the exact same, except his final undiscovered Pokemon would be in fact Toxtricity in either form. Think of it like this, let's say Tapu Koko didn't interrupt the battle, and Kukui revealed his final Pokemon. We truly believe that it would be a generation 8 Pokemon with Troxicity being the possible candidate. Both forms of this Pokemon are really popular, and it would have given off similar vibes like Harrison where Ash meets a new undiscovered Pokemon before travelling on to the next region. On top of that, it fits perfectly with how Kukui has travelled various regions himself back when he was younger. Finally, we have Hao. His Pokemon would be Decidueye, Raichu, Tauros, Crabominable, Noivern, and Flareon. The four new additions were chosen for various reasons. Tauros seems like a fun Pokemon to give to Hal, maybe even holding a small easter egg to Hal in the games, the player character learns how to ride Tauros back on Mele Mele Island, the island to Hal's grandfather Hala, who is the Kahuna of the island. Crabominable and Flareon are both options from his game team, and Noivern felt like a great Pokemon to match Hal's battle style. Now that was a lot of Pokemon, but overall I think we came up with some great brand new teams for Ash's rivals, Again, I have to give a huge shout out to my bro, the Pokeraf, for helping me out with this video. Thanks so much for having me bro, this was really fun. If you guys came in from my channel, then be sure to subscribe to Infamous, as he really does upload that fire content. On that note, be sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And if you haven't checked out the first video in this series, make sure to go ahead and check it out as I did Ash's brand new teams. Also, be sure to head over to Raph's channel and check out his video on Ash's next adventure to Generation 9 in the Italy region. It's a banger video and you guys won't regret it. So I'll see you guys in the next video, you guys have a good one, and bye!